Hello everyone, you know what time it is. It is the start of the month, which means only one thing, more great resources. Hey everyone, I hope you're well, playing on and making the games that you all love. You're joining me, your host, Max Pears, and it's an absolute pleasure to be here with you today, whether it be morning, evening, or night. I do hope that you're having a great time and that your loved ones are safe. Now, we all know, for those who may be new, you may not know, but at the start of every month, I go through and pick some of my favorite resources by other incredible game developers and share them all with you. The reason being is the fact that there are so many knowledgeable minds out here and so much knowledge to pick up from different people with different perspectives. So I always recommend, say, four to five of my favorite ones to you and explain why I think they're worth checking out and why I personally found them extremely enjoyable. So I hope that you are ready and you get to sit back and relax as I get to talk to you amazing gurus about more game dev resources. Without further ado, let's just go straight into number one. Now this one is slightly different because it's not necessarily coming from a game developer or specifically focusing on one element, but it was one that I really enjoyed and opened my eyes up to more of the systems that were available in that of Final Fantasy VII, and that is the impact of Final Fantasy VII by the YouTuber known as Super Eye Patch Wolf, and he talks through like his experience with Final Fantasy VII, and then going back years later to find out even more that he just was not aware of, and it's a great one for that because to me. This one always inspired me, the amount of knowledge or experience left for the players to discover. It's honestly mind-blowing, especially in, you know, the state of the industry where we kind of tell the player everything. This one, to, to understand there was so much more that I was just unaware of, really was something that, again, I'm blown away by. I was so confused, or not confused, but should I say more left (laughs) bewildered by the fact that Reno's crush on Tifa actually came through gameplay as well. And I don't want to spoil it much more. He goes into better detail about this. But if you are a fan of Final Fantasy VII, as well as, say, gameplay systems and narrative systems too, then I really do recommend that you go check out this video and just enjoy learning more about it. It's very well edited, extremely extremely put together, and I was just so blown away by what we can do when we combine our systems of gameplay and narrative, and to say, you know, the remake released earlier this year of recording this episode, but not only that, you also have that much systems in such an old game, and yeah, honestly, just keeps me amazed and also inspired The fact that we've got so much that we can still learn, even from previous older games, and see that there's still a lot we can do moving forward in using these examples as cornerstones for that. Now that we've got number one finished and explained, let's move on to the second one, which is keeping in the RPG theme, which is by the design doc and explaining what makes a good level up system. Now we're seeing a lot more games adapt to adding more of these kind of levels, RPG features, whether that be in your loot that you pick up to that of your just standard character that you're playing. And again, it's breaking it down from different angles, like what does make a good one? What is it that we're able to do, we're able to learn and grow with, as well as what's easy for the player to understand and the UI behind this. So it is a very good episode. There's a lot that goes into these. And again, I've not worked with this. I know RPG teams or people who work in these kind of focused elements of the game. And to me, again, it's just so much detail that goes into it and how 
how do we change this, right? How is it that we as designers mix it up? You know, it's the simplicity of it is just numbers on a spreadsheet, right? Level one is X XP. Level two is say 200 XP, so on and so forth. But what makes it more enjoyable? What is it the reward for leveling up? What makes you want to grind? Get that, you know, for example, whether it be in Destiny, the the light level, or maybe in World of Warcraft, certain sets of armor which allow you to be able to boost certain stats within your character. When you break it down, it's an Excel sheet with different numbers. But it's how do we take that as designers, especially UI and user uh, UX designers, and push that into the players so they understand what's going on. Again, fascinating stuff. And I recommend that you do check that one out. Hence it being on my list. The third one is actually a level design analysis of Witcher 3, Oxenfurt, in which, let me just make sure I pronounce this name co- correctly, it is Eduardo Tassi, I believe I believe I said it name, the name correct. If I haven't, sir, I do sincerely apologize. But it's where he goes and actually creates a replica of Oxenfurt in Witcher 3, just showing what he learned from it. Why is it set like this? What is the benefits? And kind of breaking it down there. And I always do think that's such a a fascinating one to do. I've personally never done it, but we've seen other amazing designers do something where they look at a certain aspect of the game and then actually go on and try to replicate it within their editors. Again, great work by all these amazing people. I do recommend checking it out there. So go see it, go read it, and just see what he has discovered himself from recreating, because it might inspire some of you out there to go recreate and re-kind of block out those elements of one of your favorite games and or levels too. At Level Design Lobby, we believe everybody has a story to tell. Hobbyist or student, freelancer or veteran, we made it our mission to unite those who share our passion for creating and developing great games. Thanks to our generous Patreon backers, we've been able to do just that. So if you've already pledged your support, thank you. If not, you too can ensure the future of Level Design Lobby, helping us to create even more exciting content, collaborations, interviews, and much more. With awesome perks and rewards, whether you're a seasoned professional or just getting started, you're sure to find something for you. Want to share tips, tricks, and advice with passionate, like-minded developers? Our awesome community Discord has you covered. Fancy practicing your level design, creating strong portfolio content, and having fun? Then try our level design weekends. Or perhaps you want to individually discuss your work, hone your skills, or level up your career. Then consider our one-on-one mentorships. If you share our vision, then go to patreon.com forward slash level design lobby for more information and to pledge your support. Thank you. Now the fourth one, which is an expansion more, well, in literal terms, but also expansion focusing on the narrative, is an article on Gamma Sutra called Directing the Outer World's First Narrative Expansion, The Pearl on Gorgon. And it gets to sit down and to kind of discuss, well, what is it that you're trying to do and how, in terms of with the expansion, in terms of how we entertain the player, how we building on the lore, and kind of what it is that they try to address when they think about that of the player. What is it the player is most curious about? These kind of elements are really kind of the first questions that you'll be asking yourself, especially when expanding upon the base game. How does it answer those questions? Where do you take these the, these elements moving forward? Especially when you are doing a DLC, so you know your time limit is much smaller, probably your team size is much smaller too, and how far you can push it, all these elements coming into it. So I do recommend very much so checking this one out as we're seeing it more and more as the industry keeps growing. You have these season passes. There's normally a DLC to almost every game or every AAA game that releases. So if you are going to be working in this industry, 
for sure you will be working on an expansion pack at one point. So again, it's great to focus and hear these elements of it because working on an expansion from my experience and I'm probably working on more expansions in my career as well, you're going to really have to think slightly different. So yes, do go check that one out for those ones. Now the final one, this one has been a, a great one to, to see and understand more, is this channel is called Game Dev Unlocked. This is by David, the creator of the indie game called First Tree. And he's now created his own YouTube channel, kind of breaking down different elements he's learned along his journey of being an indie dev and not starting as a game designer, but in other industries and moving into the game development world and realm and talking about his experience. His channel is brilliant. I do recommend checking it out. But it's his recent video that I thought some of you may like. Because I know on our Discord, we do have a separate channel discussing Unity. And with Unity, there is the more scripting side with the C Sharp, JavaScript, etc. But he talks about, because his first game with the first tree was created using a plugin called Playmaker, which is a visual scripting language. And he now goes and breaks through not only how to make a game in Playmaker, a simple game, but a game he can make in five minutes, and another competitor called Bolt, and breaking down which he believes you will get the most from, how you will, how he recommends if you're going to create a game without scripting the scripts and languages that I mentioned earlier, C Sharp, etc., how you can actually do that with the visual language plugins instead. Fascinating, really good, and just seeing how different UIs and the different experiences there. So go check that one out. Now that is all of the resources. So before we finish, let's talk and break them down again. The first one is the impact of Final Fantasy VII and its systems by Super Eye Patch Wolf. The second one I recommended is Leveling Up System: What Makes a Good One by the Design Doc. The third one is the level design kind of recreation Witcher analysis by Eduardo. Fourth one is directing the Outer Worlds DLC on Gamma Sutra. And the fifth one is a video on YouTube by David by Game Dev Unlocked called Playmaker vs. Bolt. All of them will be linked in the description down below if you want to go out and check them out. And I do recommend that you do go check them all. So thank you all very much. If you do want to reach out to me with any questions or maybe even suggestions, you can do so on Twitter, which is at Max Pairs. If you want to email into the show with any questions, then please email in leveldesignlobby at gmail.com. And if you want to support the podcast, help make sure that we get better as well as getting great benefits to joining the community and much, much more, then please head over to patreon.com forward slash level design lobby. Take care, everyone, and I will catch you all next time.